Hey Kelly, Baltimore's bioprinting community includes world-class researchers at Johns Hopkins and the University of Maryland, all the way to hobbyists who experiment in their own free time. Some people fish. Others exercise. Let that come up to pressure. Ryan Hoover is different. I'm a little restless. I get bored easily. And I'm, I'm always curious to find new ways of making things. In his spare time, he bioprints. It squirts out that plastic. It's kind of like a robotically controlled hot glue gun. He does it at Bugs, a volunteer run DIY lab in South Baltimore. Bugs is what we call a citizen science center. Uh, it's a place where a, a number of people can come in and learn about science. Bugs has three different bioprinters, all configured by Bugs members. Start with a three dimensional model of some sort, and you slice that model, um, usually in what we call the Z axis. And then your printer is going to come and build that up one layer at a time. There's your bubbling liquids. Hoover showed us how a solution mixed with live cells is loaded into the printer through a syringe and formed into so a it's, shape. It's this really tight balance that we have to keep between uh, keeping that auger in liquid uh, but not cooking our cells. There's a constant tinkering with the printers and modeling software to manipulate the cells and improve the finished product. We've printed with stem cells, with like uh, with stem cells from plants. Though still a long way out, Hoover has a lofty goal. If we can carefully place these plant cells um, and get those to differentiate into the right type of cells and then coalesce into tissue, um, the goal is that we could essentially 3D print wood. This is like a jawbone. Over at Johns Hopkins University Grayson Lab, the focus is on medical uses for bioprinting, specifically helping to regenerate bone tissue due to defects or injury. Plastic materials melted down and formed in the shape of a 3D model sent to the printer, in this case, part of a rat femur. We use 3D printing to make scaffolds. We combine that scaffolds with stem cells and essentially use that to guide those cells to, be, to regenerate new bone tissues. Dr. Warren Grayson says the lab has seen promising results in implanting bone scaffolds in rats. It gives us some hope that at, oh, at some point in time we will be able to regenerate large defects within or large pieces of missing bone within patients. There are little yeast in here. Um, you can't really see them. Trust me, they're in there. In a field still considered experimental, Baltimore's researchers and hobbyists are hoping to make an impact. There's a lot of excitement within the field at this point in time, and I think there's a lot of promise for us moving forward. I hope that there can be this, this loop of we kind of explore some wild side of things uh, that maybe lead to some insights uh, for these other researchers, and, and we certainly gain a lot from other researchers in this field and, and everyone sharing their ideas and advances. Dr. Grayson estimates clinical trials with humans to be at least five years out. The University of Maryland is doing similar bioprinting work in its tissue engineering and biomaterials laboratory. And for more information about bugs and how you can get involved, we have a link to their website at our website. That's abc2news.com slash infocus.